Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I think it's recording now. Awesome. Okay. So let's see. I've got some questions. Let's start with, um, wait, so are you related to Emily Walsh by chance? Yeah. She's my twin sister. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I wrote to her and I imagine, so you, so you read the message and stuff, but if, if your sister is anything like me, she saw some random person pop up and probably hasn't even clicked on what I wrote. So well, it um, actually popped into like the message requests. Uh huh. Um, and it didn't, so I can reach out to her and say like, you know, Hey, this is legit. Like, <laughs> please do because I know, like, for me, I'm able to usually, like, if somebody writes me that I don't know, it'll at least show me. I think it'll show me the actual message, but it just showed up as a request. It didn't even show what I wrote. Yeah, yep. It just showed up as a request, and then you had to accept the request to read the message. So, okay, but that still doesn't mean you've had to. Okay, so for me, I would do that, I guess, but I totally see why people don't because so much of the stuff can be scams, right? So if you would tell her, that would be really great. Yeah, I can definitely do that. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Because she'll have, yeah, she'll have, she was much more involved after we stopped going, uh, like, habitually, she was much more involved with everything. So I'll okay. definitely reach out to her. Awesome. Okay. And so twin sister. Okay. How old are you, Evan? Uh, 26, going to be 27 next month. Oh, wow. Happy early birthday. Thank you. 27 in October. All right. And what years were you active at EHI? Um, probably. Oh God, I don't even know. Even a, like a round and about, because then I could probably find out exactly, but like, yeah, yeah. Just remember I best. probably like fifth grade through seventh grade, maybe even eighth grade. I graduated eighth grade in 2007. Okay, so, so I would say 2004 through 2007, maybe. Okay, 2004 to about 2007, cool. And we, yeah, we were involved for like four or five years, so. Yeah. So what, what brought you guys there? Like um, uh, my parents. Um, so yeah, so my parent, my, both my parents worked for the Salvation Army Girls Incorporated in Hartford. Um, my mom was like the program coordinator for Girls Inc. Um, and they, I mean, we didn't necessarily know this at the time, but like, as we've grown up and like been reflecting upon like childhood and things like that, you know, they really wanted to, we grew up in a primarily white town, very small town, Bolton, Connecticut. Um, and they really wanted to expose us to other races and way of life and way of living that, you know, they knew we weren't going to get in our school district. Um, and both of them, you know, having a lot of friends of color and working in the city, they were like, this is not going to be something that we're not going to, you know, we want our kids to grow up like with a multicultural view of the world. Um, so it was something that, you know, we went every single Saturday, um, the bus would come pick us up. Um, the little yellow school bus would pick us up and we would um, go in. Um, and yeah, we did that for a long time. Um, and it was just, you know, also it was for that, but also my parents were like, it was a way for you to, you know, spend your Saturdays as well. So, um, and we would do all of the programs and activities and obviously learn how to interact and bond and ride with horses. Um, and that was, yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> and did you guys have experience with horses before you had done this program or? No, nope, not any experience at all. Um, so we, yeah, we were brand new to riding, and I, I like I remember starting off um, in like the blue group, um, <laughs> which is like the beginner group. Um, and by the end of our time there, we were all like in the gold group. You know, Miss Kelly wanted us to be counselors and come back and work in the summer um, and 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 get involved more deeply with the organization. Um, so yeah, we had no previous experience with that. Um, 
nothing with equine husbandry in general. Like I know they taught a lot about like, you know, the parts of the horse and how to upkeep the horse and, and, and like veterinarian type stuff. Um, and we also were learning, like, this is back when I, this is, I just have really random memories, but this is back when like floppy disks were a thing. Uh, <laughs> and we were like learning how to use floppy disks in computers. And, you know, we had, so we had computer science, we had um, equine science with um, Auntie Heather. And then we had, um, I know your friends with, I saw your friends with Matthew Akers on, um, his mother was involved um, with another woman. Um, and they taught us environmental science. Um, so it was a really well-rounded program. Um, so yeah, it was, it was cool. So yeah, we had very little experience with everything that we were learning. Okay. And Auntie Heather being uh, Mrs. Kelly's daughter, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's so cute. I'm, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm pretty new to, um, so uh, one of my best friends, uh, Tiffany, now works with uh, Ebony Horse Women. And so it's so cool, like, you know, I've met Ms. Kelly and yeah. uh, Heather and stuff being on the board, but it's so cool. I'm like, wow, it's just, it's such an extended family. When you all talk really? about everyone, it's just it's so, I, I love hearing Auntie Heather and mom. It, it's just very cute, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Miss Kelly was our mom. Like, she was our mom while we were there, and yeah. she, took, she took care of all of us. Um, and I haven't been back in a while, um, regrettably so. My sister's my sister goes back every chance she has. Um, so, okay. are you still in Connecticut, actually? No, um, I am currently in Boston, um, but yeah, currently in Boston, currently unemployed, living, you know, some sort of dream um i guess so but i am looking to move back to you know i i my master's is in higher education so i am just looking at colleges all over the place so okay well actually so if your master's in is in higher ed where did you go to undergrad and grad yeah so um <clears throat> i went to undergraduate at eastern connecticut state university um small public liberal arts school in connecticut Mm -hmm. um, I studied communications there and then I graduated there in 2015 and then right after that I went to the Ohio State University oh. um, got my master's there in higher education and student development um, and graduated in 2017 so I worked at Cornell for a couple of years right after that um, and then I most recently worked at a charter high school here in Boston in the operations team Mm -hmm. um, decided to leave that job. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and now I've been uh, looking for work to try to go back into higher ed and, and do access like Upward Bound and other TRIO programs with, with low income college, low income first generation college students because that we were also low income and first generation. Um, our low income looked a lot different than, you know, other people's low income, but for our town, we were definitely very low income. Um, in first gen. So I just want to give back to those students. So yeah, very cool. Wow. So are you so you're actively looking to leave Boston now? Or are you trying to see if you can find something there and then maybe move later? Yeah, I mean, kind of all over the place. Like, you know, I would love to stay in Boston. I signed a 12 month lease. So I don't know how that's going to work trying to break that or leave that if I do get a job somewhere else. But, you know, I've been unemployed for five months. I, I've been fortunate to be able to collect, which Good. has you know, helped a lot substantially, especially with the COVID assistance. Right. Um, but, you know, it's still very expensive living in the city. And I know. Yeah. so I'm just kind of, I'm looking wherever, like wherever I can get a job for a comfortable salary point is where I'll end up going. So I just recently started looking at higher ed again. I really wanted to try to transition to corporate mm -hmm. um, and do training and facilitation. I've been doing a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion work um, for different, you know, regional and national nonprofits throughout my entire like educational and professional career. So I was trying to get into that, but um, you know, education and corporate, academia and corporate don't necessarily mix. So they're, you know, they really want people that are coming from corporate. So I said, well, I've applied to over 200 jobs <laughs> and no luck. So I might as well go back to higher ed, so. Yes, yes. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's like a, a jungle gym. You know, you swing forward, you go back, you go from side to side until you hit it. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I won't be unemployed forever. Um, it's just kind of like where and when and how much. <laughs> Absolutely, and how much and yep. how much. It's very important these days, unfortunately. I wish it wasn't like that, but. Yes. You 
Yeah. Well, the nice thing is you're young and the sooner you find something at a price point that you're good with, then the sooner you can start saving. And then you know what, then at some point, maybe you could take any job, you know? Right, but exactly. Yep. And that's like what my, my main goal is to be able to just bank as much as I need. And then one day just kind of either open my own business or, um, you know, try to, I really do want to do nonprofit, but you know, you, you got to have a cushion if you want to do nonprofit. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's far better to have a cushion than not. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. All right, well, then let's see what else. What high school did you go to? Because I know you're in Bolton, but what high yep. school did you go to? So I went to Bolton High School. Um, you know, I, I'm sure there's other people on your list I could name that went with me. Um, Actually, that would be very helpful because then it would be nice to, to kind of know who I should um, target for for more information. So I can reach out to EHI. But if you tell me some names of people, that would be really good. Yeah. So uh, Marianne Miro, M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E, uh, M-U-R-O. She uh, lived right down the street from us. She was our my best friend for 18 years <laughs> growing up. Um, so I, I still, you know, am in, in not readily contact with her, but you know, she'd know what I was talking about if I reached out to her. Okay. Um, so she, she did it for a long time with us as well. Um, and then we had Avery Kiefer, um, A-V-E-R-Y-K-E-I-F-E-R. -E -E Actually, she just got married. So I think she has a different last name. Um, but there, I'm all friends with them on Facebook. So if you, you know, you search the friends on Facebook, you'll be able to get, get with them. Awesome. Um, and then Lindsay Wasserman. She also did it for a little bit with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm pretty sure, yeah, Daniel Moquin. Um, he also did it with us, I believe. He was also a neighborhood, a neighborhood kid. Oh, okay. um, How do you spell his last name? M-O-K? M-O-Q-U-I-N. I'm not sure if I'm friends with him on Facebook. Um, we had a falling out, falling out as childhood friends, so. <laughs> oh, yes. And it yep. all, the, all the drama. Um, but we also, I also remember, um, and I'm also friends with them on Facebook. They're not from my, my high school, but Ab Abigail Brown. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if she's on your list. She was in the gold group with us. Uh, Mary Bramucci. Oh, yeah. I'm going to talk to her, t um, I think, Friday. So yeah. Yo, no way. Tell her Evans says hi. That's Absolutely. crazy. You haven't talked to that girl in forever. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So she was in the gold group with us. Um, yeah. It was, we had, we had such a cute little group. And then you probably, maybe Marissa. The name sounds familiar, Marissa. I did write her, I, don't, I think she probably thinks I'm crazy, but um, Marissa, what's the last name? I really, I am. I, she is on my list. Let me just see. Let's see, Marissa. Da, 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 da. E Elish or Elish? Yes, Marissa, yep, exactly, yep. Okay, okay, yes, so I've written to her. I think she thinks I'm nuts, because I'm not, I'm not, especially when you say how it presents, I thought that you could at least see the message, but uh, it makes it tougher. But okay, this is good though, because what I'll do is I'll ask the people who are in the office to see what other information they have and see if yeah. I can like, better, like directly reach out to them yeah. other than just on Facebook. Oh my God, that's, I, so, so what is the, um, like what, what is it that you're doing? Like you're in- Perfect. I realized I'd launched into you. I was so excited that you appeared and then forgot to tell you who <laughs> I am and what the devil I do all day. And I work in higher ed, no less. So- Oh my God, no way. Yes, yes. So bad start, but let me, let me introduce myself. Uh, I will keep you in mind because if there's anything that I can do to connect you, I will do it. But- um, Thank you. Of course, of course. So my name is Kat Young. Um, I became connected to uh, EHI, like I said, because uh, my best friend Tiffany, she's been working there for a few years now. And um, so I used to live in Connecticut maybe, oh God, like 20 years ago. So I've not lived in Connecticut for a long time. And I only lived there for a year actually when I lived there. So, um, but anyway, um, this EHI is not too far from where Tiffany lives. Um, I've had the chance to visit and I really, I just really liked it and, and felt a connection to, to what Ms. Kelly is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Honestly, not what she's trying to do, what she has accomplished. 
And yeah. um, I'd seen her on CNN Heroes, and I thought that that uh -huh. was so incredible. Yeah. Um, this woman who was on CNN Heroes was in my face and just such yep. a glamorous, elegant, like, black woman riding horses and teaching yep. anyone, let alone just anyone to ride horses and understand them. I was like, whoa, who is this, this being? So, um, so yeah, so that's how I ended up getting involved on the board. Uh, and so I work in higher ed. I worked, um, I used to work at SUNY Plattsburgh in Northern New York, uh, doing international student recruitment. Before that, uh, I lived in Boston. I worked at Wentworth, um, okay. right Northeastern. And, uh, before that I used to uh, work at, um, I don't know if you, it's, it's, it's there anyway, it's in Cambridge, uh, EF education, selling student tours, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I sort of lots of all those places. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of stumbled into higher ed because I loved working with uh, young people, yeah. and uh, yeah, universities just kept happening. And so now um, I work for this company, Kaplan International, but we recruit for Pace University here in uh, well. I'm in Jersey, but um, we recruit for Pace University in Lower Manhattan. We also recruit for from some other schools, but the one I focus on is at Pace. So the thing that I wanted to do for EHI, I'm like, well, you work with so many young people. It seems like we need a, an alumni board or just some way to collect, uh, connect alums. So that way, um, you know, there's no, for a place with so many stories, I feel like the thing that's missing is storytelling. And the yeah. things that you're sharing with me and other people have, it's just such a, you know, it's a place rich with uh, interesting history and uh, just so dynamic. And, um, you know, to hear what you guys are doing, what you have done, what you will do. It seems crazy to me not to use those stories to help this place grow. Mm -hmm. And um, Ms. Kelly is always trying so hard to get more funding. I feel that the stories that you tell would help donors to connect even more with this place yeah. and um, to, to really invest, whether it's time, hopefully money, mm -hmm. uh, but time, money, whatever they can to, um, to see this place into the future. So, uh, so yeah, that's really what my goal is, is to help specifically with this fundraiser as a start, but to, to really build up this uh, community of um, uh, young people uh, and others, but particularly young people, because that's my interest, um, build up this community of young people so that way um, you guys have a way to connect with each other, but to also be able to benefit, uh, you know, in as many ways as possible to giving back to, uh, to the organization. So what part of Jersey are you in? I'm in Bayonne, so not too far from Jersey City. Like I okay. crossed the Hudson and I'm in Manhattan. So yeah, yeah that's awesome. I've been looking at in that area as well. Um, oh. My sister lives in Jersey. Um, I have friends in Manhattan. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I've been looking like not, I don't necessarily think I would want to live in New York City. Um, yeah. Oh, right. Boston's great. I love like living in a big city, but New York would just be too overwhelming for me. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I've been looking all of that. So let me know if you get any openings of Kaplan. Let me know. I've definitely heard of Kaplan before. So that's so um, crazy. When you said higher ed, I'm like, all right, all right. And um, I think, you know, what I'll do is I'll just, you know, anything that I can think of that might be of interest, I'll just send your way. But the, awesome. the reality is, it's just a matter of, I always think of it like this because sometimes I'll send people admissions stuff. I'm like, well, I don't really like admissions. I yeah. look. Just look at it. Hey, you never know. You might like it. And right. you don't like it forever. You just need an end to get it to school, right? So yep. Yep. no, and I've always been interested. Like I told myself if I was gonna go back to higher ed, I'd do career services, yes. um, civic engagement, and admissions. Those are my three areas. I was I was in housing for my under my undergrad. I was like, you know, I did everything under the moon on campus. Yes. And then in graduate school, I was an assistant hall director. Um, had a couple internships in different, you know, offices in different universities. Um, and then I was a full-time residence hall director and I don't want to go back to housing. So <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And now is a really rough time to do that anyway, you know, like, yeah, you know, no, I'm like, dramas that you had, but now you have to deal with COVID and quarantining students and, and, and any drama that they bring in on top of already existing drama. It's too much, too much. Yep. yep. I have too many friends that are you know, hall directors that are like, you're so lucky that you're gone. Even if you're unemployed, like it's, you're so lucky that you're not in housing anymore. And I, yeah, so I was a part-time career coach for the city of Boston for two months while I was, while I'd been unemployoyed just to continue to keep working. Yeah. Um, so that really kind of sparked my interest in career coaching and, and all that type of stuff. So yeah, I mean, I'm so glad that we connected because yes. like, this is just so, it's just so weird how the universe works. Absolutely. Um, and EHI still, still impacted my life today. So <laughs> it 
Yes, that's so crazy. Well, you know, the, that was like, wait, what? Oh, this is such a good time. So, it is, yeah. But just so you know, I mean, I know that you, you've applied to, what, 200 jobs? It's so crazy. I'm hearing from friends and they're just like, you know, normally the, the pool of applicants is like, you know, for um, even for like um, an entry level position, you might have like 30 or 40 strong candidates. But now it's still the same about 30, 40 strong candidates. But now you have three, four, 500 applicants to sift through, whereas before you had 100. So right. it, it's crazy on all sides. Like, you know, you have so many people applying who weren't before and you have so many people, you know, that you, it, it's just hard. It's still the same number of qualified applicants, but just it's, it's now, you know, just a bit messy to get to them. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, and there's a lot of, you know, grad students that just graduated yeah. within higher ed um, to go into higher ed that are still all unemployed. So I'm like, at least I got some professional work experience under my belt that I can kind of give me a leg up against them. Like I still wish them the best, but yes, it's, it's, be uh, it's been hard. It's, it's, it's yeah. really, it's yeah. Especially yeah. having to quarantine and then like have nothing to do. Like, but I was applying to jobs outside of higher ed primarily. So, um, you know, I think I'll have, I'll think I'll start to see some better luck going back to my roots, so. Yeah, I think so, I think so. Good, good, awesome, awesome. Let me see, a few other questions. I dropped my notebook, hold on. Ugh. Okay, so, all right, so we got that, we got that. Um, what would you say, I, I know you talked a little bit about this, but I am curious, like, what was your main takeaway when, you, you know, you finish up with EHI, like, what did you feel about the experience in working with horses? Like, what did you learn uh, about yourself, about horses, about life? From, from yeah. um, well, I, I think, you know, horses as therapy is something that was really big. Um, I know that's something that Miss Kelly focuses a lot on um, in terms of helping ground, you know, students, especially at risk students in terms of like their behaviors at school and in their academics. I think that, you know, EHI really showed me the importance of having a community of support. Um, outside of your family and how that community can become your family. Um, and that's something that, you know, we try to do in higher ed with our students. You know, we, we try to build them networks of support to help support them through their, their college endeavors. And um, they, you know, as, as I reflect upon the experience, like everyone that was a part of that EHI community was so accepting and willing to be accepting of everybody. Um, and, you know, really helped challenge the stereotypes that I had as a white man against people of color. Mm -hmm. You know, they really helped sort of desocialize me to things that, you know, my parents were avidly working hard to desocialize against. But, you know, again, growing up in, you know, a, a, a wealthy white town, small white town in Connecticut, you know, what diversity are we exposed to? You know, we're not even exposed to diversity of thought, let alone <laughs> diversity of sexual orientations and races and, and you know, ethnicities and, and the list that goes on with that. So, you know, I, I identify as gay and I obviously have always been gay, but I think that the experience at EHI really showed me that I was able to be whoever I wanted to be um, in that space. I never really came out while I was there, but, you know, they really showed me that, um, they were they were fostering a community of inclusivity and a community that we you know we weren't afraid to ask questions about you know other races or, or experiences or the way that you know black people in particular live um and their experiences in this country and and so it was it was a really eye-opening experience to me to be able to ground myself in preparing myself to go to college you know i i use i used that experience a lot when i was in high school to talk about you know the importance of diversity and understanding and getting to know people from different backgrounds and cultures um and that's really grounded me to this day in, in terms of doing diversity work when people ask about you know what are your first experiences with people that are different from you i i always go back to ehi like that is the first experience that i had um, and those are really foundational experiences especially as white people to be able to you know, come to, to grips in terms with our power and privilege. Um, and those first experiences can shape the way you have outlooks moving forward about learning about these things. So that's probably the biggest takeaway that I have. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. This place, every person just makes me feel like, God, I wish I got to do this program. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I, you know, like I said, I, I kind of like, once I got to high school, I kind of fell off the radar with going um, I wasn't as invested in riding horses as my sister. She always had such a natural ability 
Uh, you know, she wants to still own a horse farm when she gets older and, and, and own her own horse. And I'm kind of like, oh, I'll ride it. But I'm not, you know, I wasn't as invested as her. You know, she loved mucking the stalls and doing all that stuff too. And I was just like, uh, I was there for the, so more so for the social aspect than anything. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And then to be able to see it come full circle with, with, you know, Miss Kelly doing scene and heroes. And, you know, I just remember being in awe of like, wow, I remember when that program, I was a part of that program when it first started, yeah. you know, when that big barn was built, like I was a part of the first class that got to ride in that big barn. Like, you know, so it was, you know, it's just been incredible to see how far everything has come. And I'm just so proud of the program. Um, and so proud of Mrs. Kelly. Like she's really, you know, just such a strong, such a strong woman and setting a great example um, and defying stereotypes. And I think that that's, you know, what we need right now in this country too, is to, to showcase to people that, you know, people aren't stereotypes. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Um, let's see. Got that. Now, um, I feel like you did touch on this, but if you have anything else to say about how e, um, EHI maybe helped you um, in terms of your, your dreams, obviously you're still young, you're still pursuing them. Hopefully you're still <laughs> pursuing them until your last breath, but like, how do you feel like that helped you or did it impact, you know, you know, your decision on where you went to college or your degree program or, or your work? Um, any other comments you want to say on that? Yeah, well, I think obviously, you know, again, going back to like the multiculturally competence area, like that's, it really helped. I think, you know, again, as I've been reflecting upon that, it's, it's helped with that. Um, you know, I think subconsciously, it definitely did a lot of great work in that regard too. Um, I think in general, EHI showed me you can pursue any dream that you had. You know, Miss, Mrs. Kelly's from day one was like, this has always been her dream and she's worked really hard towards her dream. And she was always very transparent about the work that she needed to do and, and how hard she was working to, to work for us. Yeah. Um, so that was sort of my introduction to the helping profession. And here I am, you know, in, in a helping profession. Um, you know, I don't think that anyone that left EHI is not in the service of others. Um, in one way, shape, or form. Um, and that is really a good testament to what EHI, you know, instilled in us. Again, consciously or subconsciously, um, that it's our, it's important to give back to your community. Um, be aware of the community that you're in. You know, I had never done, I never, I never interacted with so many people from Hartford or learned so much about Hartford. And, um, oh God, what's the park that it's in? Um, your Queenie Park? Yeah, yeah. Um, the park, even just like understanding the, the the immediate community that we were that we were put in that we were trying to impact with with the different things that we were doing, um, walking to the pond house and learning about the nature on the way, like you know, it really showcased the importance of understanding the little things um, and how even the little things can have the biggest impact. Um, so, excellent. Well, okay, last things then would be, um, would you mind sharing with me, and I mean, you can, uh, I, I can get it from you now or you can send it to me later, your email and your phone number, just so yeah, that would be sure. questions or anything. Yep, uh, so my phone number is 860-268-9204. Okay. okay. And then my email is Evan uh -huh. J. Walsh, okay. 93 at Gmail. Okay, so Evan J. Walsh all together, 93 at Gmail. Uh -huh. Yep. Okay, perfect. All right. Wonderful. This has been so helpful. And you've told me 8 million names of people. Yeah, so I'm, I'm so glad to be able to help with that. <laughs> yeah, that was, thank you so much. Yeah, so if you talk to any of them, particularly if, even if you do nothing else, if you will just tell Emily, like, I'm not. Oh, yeah, I'm going to literally that. call her right after I hang up with you. So. <laughs> Awesome. Worry. You'll be, you'll get to talk to her. Um, but thank you so much. Like, I, I love the work that you're doing. Um, I want to be able to help in any way that I can. Um, yeah. You know, shoot me an email. That way I can send you my resume. <laughs> yes, absolutely, I will. Oh, and the other thing I was, okay, so I will send you, I mean, there may be links that you've already heard of. Like, I don't know if you're already using higher ed jobs or, or NAPS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, if I, I think jobs this morning, so. Ah, okay. We'll definitely keep doing it because I have a, 
I have many friends out there looking, but they are getting interviews and uh, they're definitely wrapping up jobs. So the possibilities are there. Yes. But um, if I see anything that looks like it might be of interest, even if I don't know the people, I'll still send it your way. Awesome. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Because I feel like they're, and you typically are probably working with domestic students, but sometimes I know now probably doesn't seem like a great time to work with international students, but might still be. No, I mean, I, yeah, I'm definitely interested in working with international students as well. I took an internationalization and globalization of higher ed class in grad school, and that was really fun. So I'm open to any experience, really, as long as it pays well. Yeah. <laughs> You know. you know, and I'm happy and, and fulfilled. That's all that matters to me. Absolutely. So. Cool. So I will, if I see anything, I will let you know, but I, I, I will um, write you back. Oh, and um, I'll let you know, uh, the fundraiser is on November 12th. So as we get more information about it, I will let you know that too. But working on this whole alumni thing, I will share yeah. as I get it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I will be looking. I'll keep you in mind. Don't worry. Okay. I got you. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. So lovely to meet you. Um, I look forward to keeping in touch. For sure. Thanks again and have a great rest of the day. You too. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Awesome.